very good morning and a warm welcome to today to Redemptress Media Center. Today being the All Souls Day, we remember and pray for all the dear departed. We have many intentions that have been sent in and we pray for all of them today. But because the number is huge, instead of reading each of those names, all the intentions will be displayed for us now to remember and pray for them. And for your kind consideration and reminder that each of the intentions sent to us, a particular Mass will be celebrated in one of the communities by a Redemptress. So each of the Mass, each intention will be celebrated at one Mass uh, in the coming days. As we pray for all the dear departed, we also specially remember and pray for those souls for whom no one remembers or no one prays for. Let us now join in the celebration prayfully.
Just as Jesus died and has risen again, so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. As in Adam all die, so also in Christ will all be brought to life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate today the commemoration of all the faithful departed. We bring before the Lord the memory of those who have gone before us. They may be members of our family, our loved ones, our friends. We also ought to remember those who have died, perhaps those who had no one at their bedside when they died. We bring before the Lord those anonymous people, but who are nevertheless loved by you. We bring everyone who matters and all matter to you, dear Lord. This morning, we present them to your mercy that in your awesome love, you will embrace them forever to be with you in heaven. As we celebrate this Eucharist, we ask the Lord's refining fire, purifying fire to purify us so that we may offer this Eucharist in a worthy manner. Let us pause for a while as we ask the Lord pardon and forgiveness. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have, have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for, for me to, to the, the Lord, Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. L Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord. 
And as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, so may our hope of resurrection for your departed servants also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial psalm, your response will be, My soul is thirsting for God the living God. My soul is thirsting for God the living God. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. When can I enter and appear before the face of God? My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. This is the will of my Father, says the Lord, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, St. Monica, before she died, made this request 
of a son, St. Augustine. When I die, you may bury me anywhere you like, but remember to pray for me at the altar. Today, dear friends, we remember our loved ones, those of our families who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, those who have people we have known, perhaps those not marked with the sign of faith. We are not there to judge their consciences. They appear before the Lord. We remember those who have died alone with no one at their bedside. And there were many such people during the pandemic where the loved ones could not, could not be there to reach out and have a glance of these people. Now, it's a strange thing that when it comes to Paul, he does not speak about the death of someone. Because somehow that word death has a ring of finality to it. Instead, he uses the word sleep. We rest until the Lord comes again. Paul uses the word death only when he refers to the death of Jesus Christ. Because he wants to say that Jesus died in the flesh. He was not asleep. He died. As far as you and I are concerned, he says, we sleep. Why do we pray for those who have left us? Elias does, in a little book, Divine Stories for Families, gives us a very telling anecdote. One day, a priest was addressing a group of children whom he was preparing for First Holy Communion, and he wanted to know how much these children had understood the church's teaching on final judgment. He asked one little boy the question, what will God say on Judgment Day to those who have led a very good life on earth? The, ba the boy without batting an eyelid said, come and enter heaven and live with me. The next question was to another boy, what will the Lord say to someone who has led a very bad life? That boy said, well, you cannot come to heaven, you will have to go to hell. Then he had a third question. The priest went on, now what will God say to those who are not good enough to enter heaven at once, nor bad enough to go to hell. After some time, a little girl put up her hand and said, God will say to that person, I will be seeing you soon. The church's official teaching on purgatory, my dear friends, is plain and simple. It teaches us it's a place or a state of purification called purgatory, where souls undergoing purification can be helped by the prayers of those who are on earth. This was given to us by the Council of Trent in the 16th century, and that teaching endures. Modern theologians Speaking of purification, speak not in terms of duration of purification, but rather they speak of the instant moment of purification. What do they mean? They say 
Purgatory is a moment, an encountering moment with Jesus Christ. In a moment, in a fire of love, the person is refined, purified. Perhaps the varying in intensity from soul to soul, depending on the state of each individual. Why do we need to be transformed by the fire of God's redeeming love? Because, as the book of Revelation tells us, 21, 27, nothing unclean shall enter heaven. The redeeming love of God, the fire of God's love, will cleanse every soul that comes before the throne of God. Unless, unless one positively, with full freedom, with full will, excludes God in thought, word, and deed, says, I don't want you in my life now, and I don't want you after I'm dead. But the question is, my dear friends, just think for a moment. Which person in his or her right mind will ever say this? With full freedom, 100% freedom, 100% will say this. Because even if 1% of freedom is lacking, 1% of my will wavers, then it's not 100%. For that wavering 1% of my freedom, for that wavering 1% of my will, the Lord will have mercy on such people. St. Paul tells the Corinthians that in the world we must necessarily live by faith, not by sight. And what we do in our words, thought, word, and deed come under the purview of the moral law, the moral life. Because we, what we do in faith comes under the purview of the moral law. But when we see God face to face, we walk by sight. And that is precisely what we are longing for, to see God face to face. And in the gospel, Jesus assures us that the Father has entrusted the whole creation, including you and I, to him. And the Father wants that nothing should be lost. And will Jesus carry out that command? Yes, he will. He says, anyone who believes in me, I will raise him, raise her up on the last day, that we may enjoy eternal life. Dear brothers and sisters, Yesterday, All Saints Day, Solemnity, today, All Souls Day, are two sides of the same coin. Why? Because God has destined both the saints and the souls to be in communion with Him. They are in communion with Him, just as we are in communion with Him. The souls and the saints come all under the communion of saints. The difference is, however, that the church has declared these as saints, and some it may not have declared. Those who have died are holy souls. However, when we look at both from God's point of view, how does he look at them? In his fire of redeeming love, every soul that approaches him in an instant is redeemed. Because for God, 
there is no drawing out of purgatory in terms of duration. Why? Because God is not conditioned the way we are by time. For God, everything is eternal now. The now moment, when he sees the soul, in a moment, the soul is redeemed. Purgatory is not in terms of duration. But for you and I, who live in time and space, there is duration. And because there is duration, we want to pray for those who have died, those who have gone before us. And the church encourages us to pray. The Catechism of the Catholic Church recommends prayer for the dead in conjunction with the offering of the Eucharistic sacrifice, also encourages us to do almsgiving, indulgences, works of penance, which we may undertake on behalf of the dead. We may have masses offered to them, for them, visit their graves, and make daily sacrifices for them. Now you may ask, how does all that help the holy souls? God can foresee and apply the merits of our prayers, penances, and works of charity done even years after their death for our departed dear ones in favor of the deceased souls at the moment of their deaths. Even though we will be doing this much later, God can foresee that we will be doing because he is not conditioned by time. Pope Benedict considers purgatory as an existential state, and hence it is not necessarily accurate to speak of a location or duration of purgatory. According to Pope Benedict XVI, the souls are aware of the immense love and perfect justice of God and perfect and perf and consequently suffer for not having responded correctly and perfectly to that love. It is the suffering of the holy souls. He continues, therefore, purgatory is the fringe of heaven, a state where heaven's eternal light has a refining effect on the holy souls, not poor souls. Holy souls who are held in the arms of divine mercy. That's hope for those who have gone before us. Let us therefore, dear friends, this morning, in communion with them, recommend them to our Lord's mercy. Amen. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Savior, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I'm unable now to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Prayer for the end of the pandemic. <clears throat> Almighty and merciful Father, who show your love to all your creation, we come before you asking for a quick control of the coronavirus currently ravaging our world. Hear graciously the prayers we make for those affected by the virus in various parts of the world. Grant healing to the sick, eternal life to the dead, and consolation to the bereaved families. Protect doctors, nurses, and others serving the sick. We pray that as medicines and vaccines to combat the sickness are being found and administered, they may be safely, effectively, and equitably distributed to the most vulnerable populations all over the world. We pray for all governments and health authorities that they may take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make up prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your departed servants for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. God sent His Son. Because he 